Sunday, and welcome to It's a Wrap. Uh, we had a, an interesting week this week, being with a holiday involved, so we kind of had a skeleton staff, but yeah, we, we survived through it. Hey, Tracy. Hello. All right. So, let's see. Let's start with Monday. We had an overnight staff meeting, and I will be working with every overnighter one-on-one -on -one as far as how to handle the house dogs and how to handle puppies. So that'll be coming up um, this week. I have to work around their schedule because I don't want to have them come in when they should be sleeping. Uh, Thursday was Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Um, let me see. Saturday we had the Small Business Saturday over at Wolf Hill Gardens here in Ipswich and Tracy was one of our brave soldiers um, along with Diane, we had Karen, we had John, uh, we had, who else was there? Um, Marianella came with Elena and Melvin. Um, so we were able to bring dogs there, show people dogs. Um, we also did a, some raffles that they had organized for us. Um, so that was, it was cold. It was outside, it was very cold. But they were nice enough to have a heater, which was behind uh, the people at the, the table, and we just, they just moved around an awful lot, so. <laughs> that, but it was perfect. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, so that, that was done yesterday. At the same time, we actually had cell signaling here. Uh, we had probably 10 to 12 volunteers, and they put up a six-foot fence in between Puppy Hill and Flatfield. So you probably saw them working, pounding in stakes, putting up a six-foot fence, and they actually made it all the way down to the end, which is great. So now Larky won't be able to jump over the fence. We've actually had a couple of other dogs that um, attempted it, did not succeed, but it was only a matter of time, especially with snow coming, that they'd have that little extra oomph uh, to get over it. So we have a now a six foot fence, we're very happy about that. And eventually we will be taking the four footer down and repurposing that elsewhere on the farm. So that was done yesterday. Um, let me see, and today I had a nice little visit from Harry and Beth. Um, so that was good. I saw Cora. Yeah. I got to hold Cora. She's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was a nice little surprise. Um, other than that, it's really cold here. I have snow at my house. It hasn't melted because it hasn't gotten warm enough yet. Um, and it up there. Yeah, I will. <laughs> So other than that, you're going to see a lot of winter jackets coming out, hats, gloves, everything. Uh, boots. boots. Yeah. yeah. I froze yesterday, so I got my boots today. Yeah. Smart, smart. Um, so one thing that I did want to kind of put a kibosh on is the other day when Michaela was here, so it must have been, let's say Wednesday, there was a dog scrap here in the arena. And I just wanted to let everybody know the circumstances behind it. So. Evidently, we had Bianca and Kirby were eating, and Bianca's kennel to the outside was still open, along with Carl's kennel to the outside. So Carl decided to come through, through Bianca's kennel, with the door was open so she could be called back in, and he came on in. So that was the error of the, um, the kennel assistant, and she did own up to it. She told me exactly what had happened. So very quickly, she was able to get a hold of Carl as soon as Kirby saw Carl, that's when the, the barking and the aggression started. Um, Michaela knew exactly what to do to grab those back legs and start to turn, and he, she was able to get Carl, and Sarah dropped everything. She ran over to get Turby. I examined both dogs, not a scratch on either one. There was some dog slobber on one of them, but there was no broken skin, there was no blood, there was nothing. It's, it looks and sounds a lot worse than it actually was. Bianca was also here. Um, I loved watching her. Yay. And she was just kind of rooting them both on. She didn't get involved with it, thank goodness. Um, but it was an error that the kennel assistant made. She realizes, and moving forward, she knows kennel doors are all shut. Kennel doors outside are shut before opening the kennel doors inside. So. That is what happened to it. I know I've been getting a lot of grief um, in my email about it, but that is what had happened, so I just wanted to put it out there. So, no dogs were injured during that scrabble. It's all good. Now it's time for your questions. 
craft. He says, Pam was a great overnight volunteer trainer. Glad you are working to fill her roles. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. There's um, a picture of Kringle. Kringle's enjoying the holiday season in our little town by attending the Christmas parade. I love her. Oh my gosh. You know, if I could only travel as much as they do. I know. Jeez. <laughs> Get your questions in while well, we have a chance here. Warmers that go inside the gloves. Oh, yes. Yeah, they get in the way. I need to find those. 
We had some here. Yeah, I just saw them at uh, Costco yesterday. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's my next step. If, they, if I can't locate them, they will be locally purchased. <laughs> yes, that's a definite need. Okay, Crafty, what is the procedure to follow if a dog swallows something, as Lackey did on Friday? Should George be called to consult? Um, actually, what should be happening is if you get it immediately, like Carl, for instance, he also decided to eat a rag that was left in the pond area. I'm going to assume back in dog pest because no other, we haven't been out in, in the pond uh, other than uh, letting dogs run. So he got a hold of a cloth, I want to say it was probably this big. So as soon as I got to him, and as, as I'm running to him, he's eating it faster and faster and faster to get it down his throat. So by the time I got to him, he was already done. So I came back down to the barn, looked up his weight, because we do keep weights on the dogs very uh, relig religiously. Uh, saw what he weighed immediately, one teaspoon per every 10 pounds on the dog, put it in a coffee cup, and I had another kennel assistant with me. We ran up to him. He held Carl while I opened his mouth, threw the hydrogen peroxide down, and he didn't like it. But it says 10 to 15 minutes, he, it, they should induce vomiting, and that didn't happen. So I brought him back down. He stayed in his kennel, and he was watched um, until he finally did throw up. And he did. He threw, threw the rag right up because it was too big to allow it to try to pass. So I'd rather have him throw it up than try to run it through his whole system. And that's exactly what they did with Larky. Um, Larky is a big boy. I'm sure that he could have passed it. However, it wasn't. it's not worth the risk. So a little bit of um, hydrogen peroxide, and it eventually comes up. He just needs to be watched. So that all worked out well. Bob B. in Minnesota. Lynn, when you were in the kitchen earlier, was Nessie bleeding? No, she wasn't bleeding. She looks like she looks like she got in a fist fight. Um, right over her eyebrow, she is um, a little bit swollen. So I asked Donna to just grab a warm compress, put it on her, um, of which Callie was all over. Like, what is she getting that I'm not getting? So Donna, I tried to hold Callie back while Donna was able to put the face cloth on her for a few minutes just to see if that would help. Um, I'm thinking that she, she got it scratched, got it bumped, or whatever. Um, but we are, we do have notes on it. We also have notes on the fact that she has a little bit of um, diarrhea going on. So we have, we give her some Pepto. Um, we'll see if that helps her out. And if she's not better tomorrow, then I will bring her in and have her looked at and the eye at the same time if that swollen hasn't subsided. This is from Love Husky. Was there any other signs with Frank prior to horrible attack? Close calls. That wasn't Frank, was it? It was Carl. That was Carl. Yeah, that wasn't Frankie. That was that was Carl. Was so what was the question? Was there any other close calls, etc.? Was there any other signs with Frank prior to the horrible attack? Like, was it going to happen? No. Oh no! I because I watched that video after Michaela had told me about it. I checked out the dogs. Everything was good. Um, they actually broke up the fight the correct way, which was awesome. That. They paid attention when I worked with them last week. Um, no, Car actually, Carl was fine. He just wanted to eat, um, and he didn't even notice Turby. It was Turby who noticed him, and that's when uh, he he went at Carl. But Carl was just defending himself. Carl was a very sweet, sweet boy. Not that Turby's not, but um, yeah, Turby's a lot bigger. Yeah, they're pretty mellow, the two of them. Yeah. Okay, MB from New Jersey. Sorry if you already mentioned this. I just came on. Have you seen Capri recently to see how she's doing? And any updates on Anna? Um, so Anna is doing well. I talked to Lindsay, who still has her um, right now, and we had to, because her weight increases, we have to increase the medication that she is on. So I was working with Lindsay this week as far as getting that um, dosage regulated with her per the vet that I spoke to. So Anna is doing well. Um, I'm hoping that they can meet up with her potential um, new adopter who is over at the hospital and um, Anna will be in a forever home moving forward. So that, that should be happening soon, I'm hoping. As far as, who is it? Capri. Capri. <laughs> so I spoke with Sharon, um, who has 
as Capri, and Capri's appetite has been increasing, and her waistline has been thickening, but I don't, and I have not seen her yet, so I want to look at her, I want to see if there are any other, you know, how she actually looks, and not that she's just gaining weight because she's eating more. I'm really hoping that <laughs> she does have puppies in there. So she is supposed to be coming down, I would say, I'm hoping this week, um, she's just with the holidays. No one was around this week. It was it was a tough week. Okay, we have Crafty. I thought Wilson was donated for a veteran. Will Wilson be given to a veteran if whatever capacity he is determined to be best suited for? Yes, and I did discuss that with Carlene this morning. She was asking about him, I, and that's exactly what I said. We were given Wilson by a vet for a vet, so if he does get washed from the program, he will go to a vet. Another crafty. Carlene is sometimes hesitant to seek vet care. Should the volunteer ask or call for your opinion if Carlene does not want vet care for a dog, such as in Larky's situation? Um, I. I don't mind being called. I can, you know, if I'm on the farm, I can just do it. Whereas if I'm not on the farm, if it's after hours, um, etc., then you, I can know about it. I can give her my what I feel, whether she's going to abide by it or not. I, I don't know. Okay, Tori, Lynn, you are doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Can you tell us a bit about your background that prepared you for your role at SDP? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, so, my background. Um, I would say in 95, I bought my first Dane because I always loved Danes uh, ever since I was little. Um, so, I bought my first Dane and I went into the show ring doing obedience with him. I got a CD on him, I got him titled. And I worked with four other trainers to know the different ways of training because there are different ways of training a dog um, in order to get the title on him. Um, once I got the title on him, I purchased uh, my next day, and these were fawns. They, they weren't blacks or hoverboards or anything, these were fawns. Um, so I got my next one. I tried to get her a uh, title on her also, but the, her name was Athena. And she was just a spunky little girl. So one of the obedience things that you need to do is everybody lines up their dogs in front. You put them in a down stay and you step backwards, quite a distance back. And you just stand there and you have to stand. And the dogs are not to get up. Well, Athena decided she wasn't going to get up. She was going to lie on her side. Granted, you get points taken off of you for them moving, but she didn't get up. So she was not disqualified. Then she proceeded on kicking the dog next to her. <laughs> and that dog got up, so that dog's disqualified. Then she rolled over and kicked the dog next to her on that side. That dog got up, that dog got disqualified. So she never got up. We were told to return to our dogs, go into the heel position, and that the end of that exercise was over. So she was still in the running of getting some points and getting a title on her. However, I was not well liked at that. <laughs> That was my um, that was my, my training. Um, so after I did that, I ended up doing a rescue with a woman in Maine, a Great Dane rescue. I did that for seven years, where the dogs would come to me. I would train them in obedience before the dogs were placed out in their forever homes. Knock on wood, not one dog was ever returned back to me. They were all perfect um, forever homes, which was. Astonishing! I was very surprised, and I probably placed over, I'd say over a hundred dogs. I ended up placing out, um, and there were times where I had twelve Danes at my house at once. And I was always the alpha dog, so it worked out well. And then, yeah, and then I had my um, was pregnant, had my little girl, and it was just too much of a liability to have strange dogs um, with a young child. I gave up the rescue, but during that time, I also had met Caroline back in, I think I met her in 90, probably 96, I want to say, um, and I came up here numerous times. Every day I was up here, a litter that she had had, had 15 
pups and the female passed away two days after giving birth to them. So every day after work I came up and I helped Carlene rear those puppies. Every single one survived, which was good. I ended up taking five home with me so I didn't have to come back. I live in New Hampshire, so I'll come back, back and forth, back and forth. Um, so once they got old enough, I brought some home with me and then brought them back when they were ready to be um, placed out because at the time, the service dog project didn't exist. She was still doing her animal episodes. Aww. So you go way back. I go way back with Caroline, right. And then other than that, my managerial skills go back to my mortgage, the mortgage company I work for and the many mortgage companies I work for in hospitality. So, and here I am. You're all around. <laughs> Girl, you, you know a lot. I do. Now this um, question that is Love Husky, when she was talking about Frank having any other previous, she was referring to the dog that attacked Carlene's daughter, um, Victor. Um, if he had any previous signs before the attack. That day? Oh, 
whole bunch in there, then we're going to expect a whole bunch, and we know that we're going to be there for a very long time. Okay, Gail, phrase again. As it gets colder, have you considered flipping the camera, closing the door to the feed room, and doing your talk from outside of panels 11 and 12 rather than the arena? That's a good idea. But we don't have a microphone in there. Oh, that's right. So you'll be able to see us, but you won't be able to hear us. So that, that's a really good idea, though. It's way up there, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay, Lila May, before Capri comes to the farm, does Lockie need to be, uh, Lockie need to be, Yadia free? Um, Larky will be all set because he is um, he's on his a five day flagell and it should knock him knock it right out of him. He um, he no longer has diarrhea, so that has taken care of taken that course already and is just keeping it going for an extra few more days until it's out of his system. So he'll he'll be fine. He'll be fine this week. Um, so that's plenty of time before the pre comes. Tori from the Midwest. Very impressive background info shared. Thank you, Lynn. Dog bless. We are all blessed to have you there. Well, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Crafty. Never heard about Carleen losing a mom after birth. What was the name of the mom dog? Uh, the mom dog was Pippi. Pippi. So if you see the picture in Carleen's house of the big overstuffed chair, the stuffing all over and there's a Harlequin sitting on it. That's pretty. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Lila May, I've seen visitors at the farm chewing gum, as in today. What to do about it? <laughs> well, if I see a visitor chewing gum, I will ask them to remove it. Um, you know, absolutely no gum for staff members, no gum for volunteers. Visitors, that's a little bit harder, but you know, that's a good idea though. Um, you brought that up because maybe that's something that we can put right in the welcome hut. Yes. No gum. Because there is a trash barrel right there. So that's, that's a really good idea. Thank, thank you for bringing that one up. Patriots won. Sorry, I just got a, <laughs> an alert. 36 to 13. <laughs> okay. Crafty, Olive was a Merle and she was bred to Walter with no white pups. 